Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the marketing training of the ATS Business University. Today, we're going to be talking about are you taking care of your customers or your own ego? The reason why I, the reason why we're discussing this today is because when it comes to our businesses, we always want to put out there what we think will work. But in business, you do have to take care of your customers and not make yourself feel good. Catch to that is when you take care of your customers, your whole business will prosper and you will feel good about it. So when a crisis hits, are you going by your own ego or are you paying attention to your consumer's concerns? Are you more focused on your concerns when a crisis hits or are you focused on your consumer's concerns? Are you brush, do you brush it off like, oh, that's no big deal or are you getting ahead of it? When, when the coronavirus hit, when a hurricane is coming, the things that we have information on before it gets to a quote unquote bad point, are you brushing that information off or are you getting ahead of it? Down here uh, in, well, here in Galveston, Texas, wherever hurricanes hit, we get them so frequently where when people say, oh, when there's a hurricane brewing in the Gulf, we're kind of like, oh, okay. But after one really bad hurricane, if anybody tells us a hurricane is coming, we're instantly packing up, loading up, making reservations in other cities. Like we now we begin to shift. We don't just sit on it. We begin to shift. So now we pay attention to to what we hear. Are you doing the same thing with your customers? If you hear if you have customers nationwide, are you paying attention? Are you do if you hear something is about to hit in their area? Do you get ahead of that or you do, you, do you just brush it off like, well, that's not going to, or do you brush it off like that's not going to, do you uh, brush it off like that's not going to bother my, me and my business? And then are you taking care of your super fans and your target audience or are you staying in your ego? Your super fans are the ones that no matter what is going on, they are going to follow you. They are going to be there. They are going to, the, every time you put out a new product, they are there. Every time you post a video, they watch it, they share it. Every time. So are you taking care of them? Are you showing them that you care about them when crisis hits? Your target audience, have you created something for your target audience to let them know like, hey, this is about to happen in your area? This is about to happen in your area? So I just want to make sure, I just want to make sure that you're taken care of properly. Or are you staying in your ego like, well, yeah, you know, that's not going to bother me. Oh, that's not real. Oh, that's not really going to happen down here. And do you brush it off? Do you pay attention to the major trends or doing whatever you want to do? Are you paying attention to the fact that major companies are moving or are you just, ah, I see you moving. I'm just going to sit here. Like, are you being a proper CEO? Are you being a proper entrepreneur, business owner and taking care of your customers? All of this is extremely important when it comes to your marketing slash branding. And I say it that way because marketing is branding and branding is marketing. It's actually one in the same now. And it's extremely important because it, build, it builds brand trust. It humanizes your brand. It lets your audience know that you care. And if your audience knows that you care, if they trust you, they will give their money to you no matter what is going on. So can your audience trust you to be a resource in all things? Not just a resource in your niche, but a resource in all things. Are you able to take your niche and, and be a resource in it to help others? 
can you properly take what will directly affect your audience and apply it in your marketing? Right now we're dealing with the with not right now we're dealing with the virus. We've dealt with hurricanes, we've dealt with tornadoes, we we've, we've dealt with earthquakes. We've dealt with flooding, we've dealt with fires. Have you properly taken what has directly affected your audience and applied in your marketing? Have you addressed your customers? Have you addressed your audience and all of the things that are going on? And when I say major trends, when I say major trends, I'm not talking about the major trends of, oh, fidget spinners are trending. No, I'm talking about the major trends as in what are businesses doing when it comes to, what are their trends when it comes to prices? What are their trends when it comes to how they treat their customers? So I want to make sure that you are asking yourself these questions and I'll copy and paste them and put them in the chat for you as your own self-reflection for your business. And a prime example of it, a few weeks ago, I received a phone call. And I wasn't in a position to answer it at the time. But in this phone call, I had a voice message. Hey, Miss Deanna, a while ago, you said this about your company. I think this is the perfect time for you to really let people know what you are doing. Thank you, Miss Pam Norris, because she was the one who made the phone call. <laughs> because... There was something there was a something that I said that our company does that she she pays attention. And me as a business owner, as a CEO, and with the company that I have, I need to listen to my audience. Are you doing the same thing? Do you have customers calling you saying, Man, look, Grace, I'm stuck in the house with these kids. They can't go to school. They always on the YouTube. They always on Facebook. They always on their tablets, their phones. Man, I need something. And I haven't been able to find some word, something that keeps their attention, that keeps them wanting to stay and learn. Like, man, I, I wish somebody out there or, man, Grace, do you have something like that? And Grace being Grace, like, you know what? We sure do. I'll send you something. Now she may not have it in her inventory at the time, but she will put it together and send it to them because she's li <laughs> see <laughs> because she's listening to her audience. All of your customers will have the same issues but differently. So you have to actively listen to what they are telling you. You have to actively listen to what they are telling you, because they're gonna tell you the, the, the global issue is we're at home. We're not accustomed to this. I'm used to these kids being at school. I'm used to being at work. I'm used to my husband or wife being at work, but we are all under one roof. I'm going crazy. I'm about to choke somebody. I need help. That's a global issue. Like that is literally a global issue right now. But then it comes down to an even smaller issue. I'm at home because they let me go. Because we can't be at home. Because the state shut us out because of this, because of that. Or I'm at home. I'm working from home, but don't know how to quote unquote balance home, spouse, children, teach, being a teacher, being a spouse, being an employee or a manager, being a parent, being the maid, or the cook. I don't know how to balance that. Then it goes from there to, I didn't like going to work anyway. 
but I'm stuck out because I got bills. But there's this business that I always wanted to start it, or there's this idea that's been brewing in my head to even narrower, you know what? This is just the opportunity that I needed. Now I need to go, and now I need to go find what I need to help me move forward in whatever it is I'm doing. If you are getting ahead of what is going on and not brushing it off, if you are taking care of your super fans and your target audience, if you're paying attention to the major trends, you will have all this together. And again, this is not just for the virus. When there are hurricanes, you have people suffering because they may be without lights. They may be without food. You don't know how bad the hurricane is going to be. You don't know if it's going to sit over that city and just pour down for days, causing massive flooding in areas that have never flooded before. You don't know any of this. You don't know if that tornado, you don't know if that tornado is going to hit, but you, you get a warning. Tornadoes are the most, they're one of the most unpredictable at times. Earthquakes, you can't predict it, but you can get ahead of it. And you can say, hey, let me make it easy for you during these times. I know it's going to be hard. I know you're going to have a lot on your mind, but let me help ease you. Hey, we have a podcast. You can listen to it on your phone. Hey, we have this. Hey, we have that. Hey, you know, there's a partner with partner with companies, partner with companies, partner with the companies that make the little, the little superchargers. Grace, if you have one that you can show them, like the, the ones that you charge those, and then when, you, when you're out and about and your phone is going, and you don't have an outlet to plug it into, you can plug it into one of those little battery pack kind of thingies. See, thank you. See if you can partner with a company like that. That is general across all platforms, no matter what you're doing, and you can brand it. Find a company that mass produces those and brand it. Put your brand on it and let your audience know, hey, for every per every time you purchase this, you'll get a little battery pack. We know there's a lot, there, we know that there's a lot going on. We know that this may happen. We know that that may happen. So guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna make sure that you're prepared, that no matter what, you're able to charge your phone. Because we have podcasts you can listen to. See, just like that. And they come in different shapes, forms, fashion. They come, they come in a variety. Find a company that does bulk. And if you find a company that does it in bulk, I guarantee you they'll let you, they'll let you brand it. They'll let you put your logo on it. Let them know for every purchase you make with us. You know, if you purchase our program today, if you purchase our program today, we'll send you, we'll send you, you know, this for purchasing. So, are, so when a crisis hits, are you paying attention to your audit, your consumer's concerns or are, you on, or are you only focused on you? Are you focused on, man, this is about to happen. I'm about to lose a whole lot of business. Well, if you get ahead of that, you just may not. I'm sure it's a lot of people that thought, man, we're prepared for this and ended up not being prepared or man, we are not prepared for this and ended up being in the perfect place at the perfect time. So before I continue to how, to how you can actually take care of your customers during any type of crisis, who has questions, who has comments, who has concerns, please ask them now. Okay. Go ahead, Ms. Pam. Okay, two things. Um, one, I want to thank you so much for sharing that charger information um, just now. I sent Grace a note uh, because that's a perfect group for Ice Buddy to partner with. We're going to have an Ice Buddy store, and we've been looking out into the world at other emergency preparedness related um, products that we can sell in our store. So I thank you for that because that was a, a business and an upsell uh, tip that we'll be able to use with our business. The other thing that you talked about was balance. And I personally have found it very difficult to balance during this time. I found for the last month, I just became inundated with my work. I used said, oh, you know, you have to stay in. So now I need to do 10 times the amount on my work. 
But in the process, I realized I did not create time for me. And it, yesterday I called a friend and I said, you know, after this weekend, this is my, my pledge to me is I'm taking a week off of vacation. And I need, because I have been going nonstop since for over six weeks now. And I said, I, I need to exercise. I need to relook at what I'm eating. I need to spend some me time because I lost balance. I just, I wasn't sleeping right. I wasn't eating right. I wasn't exercising. I wasn't doing anything but taking classes or working or researching 24 seven. Um, Mac trying to maximize this time of being in. So I thank you for talking about the need for balance. You're very welcome. You actually just brought up something that that happens any it happened to me when I retired early. It happened to me. But it happened to me in a different way. I didn't go all in. I actually didn't do anything because I'd been in the workforce for so long. I was like, who? Okay, let me take a break and then I'm going to get into it. For everyone who is stuck, who, not stuck, but who, for everyone who has to stay at home, for everyone who is on lock now, even, even if you're, even after this is over, even if you're shifting from being in the corporate office to going into into being an entrepreneur you have to create a schedule for yourself and you have to incorporate like you said exercising eating healthy taking time out for yourself you have to incorporate all of that so so in doing that that would and miss pam that would be something perfect for you to incorporate into ice buddy as well as a resource and that's for all that's for all businesses. If you're a coach, that's something you should definitely look into. Whatever you're doing. And then um Ms. Shar, this actually goes into what you asked. When you partner with a company to answer the call to crisis, how do you make it fit your brand if you are not in the arena for survival or anything like that? Pay if you pay attention to what your audience is telling you. I'm not in the arena of survival, but with what I do, what Ms. Pam Norris just said, you know, getting off, spending 24 seven researching and just going all in and not taking time, even though I'm not in that arena, I'm not in the arena of personal development coaching, I think, <laughs> or anything like that, but I can take my experience and be a resource and say, hey, during this time, during this crisis with everything going on, try to make sure you schedule time for you. Create a schedule for yourself. Be it you're at home or, you know, in, or in corporate office, create a schedule for yourself. For you to partner with someone, you only partner with brands that complement you. So you don't necessarily have to be in the arena for survival, but what you can do is partner with a brand that is that has survival themes and say, hey, can I brand this? Or, hey, everyone, you know, during this time, uh, during this time, we would like to just share with you when you purchase this, we'll give you a Swiss Army knife to help you through what you're doing with, with, with your purchase. A Swiss Army knife is nothing within your area. It's not within your brand, but when you put your brand on it, it makes them remember you. It's like, oh man, I remember that time I got that. Y'all remember that that company we, we bought from, they sent the Swiss Army knife with it and they use that Swiss Army knife. Every time they use it, they're going to remember you because your brand is on it. Just like with the charger, with the charger ports. Every time they use it, it may not, ha it may not have anything to do with your brand, but it's a resource. You can be a resource for more than just your brand in a time of crisis. And that's, that's what we're talking about today. How, how, do I, how do I take care of my customers in a time of crisis? If you pay attention to them, if you, if you make body butters, if you make shea butters, understand that if they, if they have been let go of work or if they've been sent home and they're working from home, their pay may have been cut. 
And not only may their pay have been cut, if they're fired, they have no income. But you have people who have skin, you have skin allergies. Like I have eczema. Any type of lotions for me that are not water-based help me. So what you can do is, hey, in this time of crisis, I understand that things may happen. So let me help you temporarily create your own type of body butter just for you. Because if they are, if, and, and you doing that for them will help them. Because in a time of crisis, I'm stuck in my house. You have people that are literally on lockdown, can't go anywhere, but to a grocery store and back or to get necessities and back. So if you teach them how to make their own product, they can purchase what little they can come home and be able to make it for the whole family while they're at home. And then not only that, it's something that they can use to bond with the family. It's something that can take them away from wanting to choke everybody in the house. <laughs> so it's, it, it can become a family event and it will help bring a family closer. If we, The reason why families are so shaky right now is because we literally spend 12 hours of our day not with each other. And then when we are with each other, we spend like maybe four, four hours awake in front of each other or we're either on our phones we eat separately you know there's there's no community within the home but creating a way to create community within the home helps that's a resource you're helping them with the major issue of i'm at home with everybody and i'm not used to this my mindset has not shifted to this i don't know what to do you're helping them kids like to get their hands dirty. It's just a kid thing. Adults like ways to keep their kids distracted, but it's also educational because you're teaching them, you, you think outside of the box. When, when any type of crisis is in place, you have to think outside of the box. You can either, it, when when storms hit or when earthquakes hit, you can start a, a fund to just to, to say, hey, you know what, to, to assist with the relief in this, I'm doing this. Every purchase you make, I'm going to donate $2 to this relief fund. And then let them know and then show them how you're sending it. But there's so many different things that you can do. You just have to think outside of the box. So I hope that answered your question. And Ms. Pam, I, once you get, figure, you know, once you, after you take your, please take, y'all, Ms. Pam is the hardest working person. <laughs> I can't even begin to explain. <laughs> Antonio and Pam Norris, Ms. Pam is always working. So please take your week, take a week for yourself, Ms. Pam, mm -hmm. please do. Mm -hmm. And then everybody, Create, talk to your audience about creating a schedule. Even though I am working from home, when I have my son, we are on a schedule. He does not like it, but we are on a schedule. Because mommy wakes up, he wakes up. Mommy goes to sleep, he goes to sleep. He goes to sleep before mommy. Because you still have to have a, a set, a structure you had a structure when everybody was going out of the house. Now you have to have a structure while everyone is in the house and that'll help create that balance if everyone knows what they're doing. So I hope that, again, I hope that answers your question, Ms. Shar and Ms. Pam, thank you so much. All right, Ms. Michelle G, I do see that your hand. Oh, what's up? I see you unmuted, Grace. Oh no, I, I thought you were about to keep going. I was about to remind you that Michelle G had a hand up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Michelle G, the floor is yours. All right. Hi, sorry about that. No worries. Um, I just wanted to let everybody know that as far as for uh like the imprinting on different things, imprinting your brand on things. For print has a grant that they give. Uh, my organization received 
$500 worth of journals and pens from them. Um, so you can definitely, you know, uh, go on their website and look that up and they um, let them know because one of the questions they ask is um, what product were you uh, needing or looking for? So that's out there as well. I just want to share that. Thank you so very much, Miss Michelle. You said it's for print, F O R P R I N T. Put that in print in chat for all of us. I'm looking it up right now. I can't put it. I can't put it in chat. I'm driving, but it's the number four and print spelled out. Dot com. Got it. All right, and I'm putting it in chat for everyone now. Thank you so much, Ms. Michelle, for sharing that information with us. So now, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. And from what I see, they already have some amazing things on here. So there, there you go. There you go. And with everything going on, make sure you take advantage of, if people are off, offering specials, make sure that you take advantage of that so you can, so you can properly serve your audience. Because that is very, very important. So do we have any other questions or comments or concerns before I move on to the next part? Yeah, I do. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. I'd like to give a suggestion to Char that mm -hmm. if you can make, because you do butters and stuff, if you can make little containers that when that you could send to me, let me know if you have little containers of your body butter. When somebody has to evacuate, they don't take their, their lotions. And, and Deanna's talking about she has eczema. And they don't take their, their lotions with them when they evacuate and they put pack their go bag. They don't think about that. But they need it. So when they get, when I sell somebody an ice buddy system, one of the things I can have in our store is a miniature bag, a little bag that has these little pieces of shea butter, et cetera, your, your stuff that says, hey, look, you know, when you're in that shelter, think about people in a, an evacuation shelter, you need something for your skin because they've just come out of dirty water and everything, their skin is dry, it's cut. They need something natural. So if you can put something together in a little pre cute little bag with lots of little different things, that's something that I can sell with my company for you. All right, okay. <laughs> she says she's on it. <laughs> There you go. You just partnered with a company who is all about survival in a crisis. You just did it. So I hope everybody was paying attention to how you can do that. And you and you and it just you help save someone, you help bring ease to someone, and you also bring it's a way of marketing. It's a way to ethically and morally market yourself and brand yourself. You just have to pay attention to your, to your audience. So who else has qu any questions, any comments or any concerns before I move forward or any suggestions or any partnerships? Mm, not necessarily a partnership, but um, just a comment on what you mentioned about creating a schedule. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important, I think, specifically now, because it's so much easier to create meetings and all these other appointments because everything is remote and everything is online. So you can pretty much work and schedule something literally for 24 hours and it would be very easy to do so. So it's like if you don't have a schedule, you can fall off. At least I've found that I found myself pretty much scheduling pretty much the entire day. And what I did have to do was really reach a point where I'm just like, on a regular day, what are some of the things I would have to do? So really scheduling things like lunch and simple things that you wouldn't necessarily think about. <laughs> because it's so easy to just, you know, with, with these virtual things, it's so easy to create four or five different meetings at a time. <laughs> so it's very important to really have a schedule and um, have you still follow the schedule that you would normally have if you were going out and if you were actually still having a routine day. So that's what I really want to add about that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Corey, for adding that because that is important. I, 
a couple of weeks ago um, after one of our trainings, uh, actually it was after one of our daily morning morning meetings. And after every meeting, Antonio and I have our own meeting to go over our schedule for the day. And I told myself, okay, well, I'm about to go eat now because I didn't eat until two o'clock yesterday and I got nauseous. And the only reason I ate was because I got nauseous. And he was like, yes, please do that. He said, how did that work out for you yesterday? <laughs> I was like, yeah, it didn't work out too well. Because you, you get into the flow so much when you literally forget to eat. And put, put alarms. And everything that we're talking about right now, take it and use it for your audience. Because everybody's audience isn't following everybody. Just because Ms. Pam puts out how to schedule your day doesn't mean that Corey's audience is going to see it. And just because... Dave puts out how to schedule your day. Chris's audience isn't going to see it. So take what we're take what we're talking about and use it. Be a resource. This is a global, this is a pandemic. It's not an epidemic, it's a pandemic. This is something that's happening globally, not locally in our states, not locally in our cities, not just in our country. This is happening globally. You have audiences all over the world that are suffering with the same thing that you're suffering with. Satish, they're literally on lockdown. They cannot leave their homes. In some, pla in some places in the States, there are some places where to leave your home, if, you, if you're not wearing a mask, you get ticketed. If you leave your house, you're bound to get in trouble unless you're essential employees. Everybody is home. Have you taken a more morally and have you taken moral and ethic advantage of the fact that your audience doesn't have the same distractions that they used to? They can now sit in their pajamas and work from home or they're sitting there playing a, a game system or or on Facebook because they're trying to distract themselves from the fact that I don't have a job. What am I going to do? Even those who, even those who are in that position, they still need some type of structure. Whether it's educating themselves, be a, be a resource by giving by giving resources on where you can go to get free online education there is a website that was shared with us uh, within our group it's called Coursera and I'll put it here c-o-u-r-s-e-r-a and what they're doing is they're giving away free online education due to the virus Look up things like this for your audience, whether educate whether education is is in your is your niche or not, you're just being a resource. Be a resource by posting how to make, how to do. Here's a schedule. Learn how to schedule your day. Structure your day. Make sure you educate your day. Are, are you in a position? Hey. Now that you're at home, how about reading a couple of books a day? Here's a recommended reading list from our company to you. Little things like that will make people remember you. So when we get to a new normal, you're still remembered because in their time of crises, you were there for them. It's branding and marketing. Being a resource is, is, is more than just educating people. It's more than just sharing information. Being a resource is a way to market yourself. So before I move forward, do we have any more questions, comments, concerns, or is there anyone else uh, who just wants to add value? All right. Well, if not, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to move on to the next part. So how do you take care of your customers? We've already mentioned a couple of things, 
But most importantly, pay attention to what's going on in the world and create a plan to address it. You can't help your audience if you don't know what's going on in their area. If you are in Florida and the state of California is, is having one of those horrible fire situations, if you don't know, how can you help your, how can you help your audience in California? If you live in Canada and you have audience in Zambia, you're not paying attention to what's going on over there, how can you help them? Pay attention to what's going on in the world and create a plan to address it. The Google Trends, that tells you where you're popular or that tells you what's going on. And, and if you have a, fa a business Facebook page, you can go to where your stats are, you can see your audience, you can see your demographics and you'll know where your audience is on Facebook. Still address all countries, but now you know where your target audience is saturated at. Pay attention to those areas. And then create a plan to address it. When something's going on in the area, you hear about it prior to. Something like this, something like this virus. If you, if, you, if you were paying attention to the world news, you would have been hearing about it. You would have been hearing bits and pieces here and there. Ms. Pam and Antonio are really good at this. Ms. Pam, of course, because of her company. I'll even go as far as to say, if you want to know what's going on in this world when it comes to any type of major, major crisis, major... Um, Anything major that affects the world, any major disaster, just just go to just go to Ice Buddy. I'm so serious. There are things on Ice Buddy that I found out that I did not even know was going on. There are hurricanes that there are hurricanes, there are storms that have hit, there are tidal waves that have hit, there are earthquakes that have hit. And I'm like, that happened? All because Miss Pam is paying attention. She, she's paying attention to what's going on in the world so she can create a plan to address it with her audience. I advise you to do the same. Yes, ma'am, yeah. go ahead. One of the things that's been helpful for, for me is in these classes is why I'm here. And you always preach about know where your audience is. I mean, and for anybody else who's here, I, yesterday I had to... Um, shoot down <laughs> uh, some ideas from my team. I, we're getting ready to put out a video that's going to, um, to identify who wants to purchase our product. And so I asked my team, where were we going to boost our video to? Which countries boost on Facebook? And they came up with a list. And I, then I, I looked at them and I said, why? Why those? And what they didn't realize, they came up with lists that had to do with countries that either had large populations or even c countries that had a lot of issues with um, the coronavirus. I said, but I said, their list didn't make sense because this is going out on Facebook. I need to know which countries have the most people who are on Facebook. And all of a sudden they realized we didn't think about that. I said, just have, because it's a country that has lots of people, if I'm sending out something to get data from people on Facebook, I need to know who's on Facebook. So they had to do another search the way you teach us on um, these classes, Deanna, how to do the search. And they came up with a completely different list. And they went, oh, that's, what is, um, that's uh, the, the data, the data analytics. They said, oh, you just, you taught us data analytics. I said, it's because ATS teaches me data analytics. <laughs> and so I'm going to make you all learn it too. <laughs> and so, but it, just as a per, as a point of reference, we would have, if I had followed their suggestions, the company would have spent a great deal of money and wasted it because it would not have gone where it needed to go to get the attention of the customers we needed to get data from. 
we came up with a whole new list doing data analytics the way you've taught us to do it and now we will be very cost effective in our strategic uh, uh, approach to getting this particular post out so i thank you and that's why this ats is so vital you're such a resource to companies like mine thank you thank you very much Ms. Pam. thank you very much because she's she pays attention she pays attention to where her audience is and when you pay attention to your audience you are able to create a plan to address it because she knew to check her her data because she knew to check it she knew where to target so it so she won't spend so much money that just goes to waste because she's just putting it everywhere she knew where to target you do the same thing use google trends use your data analytics that's that's one of, that's why it's so important to have a business page all, across all platforms and not just a standard social media page because business pages allow you to see the actual demographics they allow you to see who your audience is where your audience is coming from where the majority of them are because it'll actually show you you have out of the 335,000 followers you have 300,000 of them are saturated in Italy and then and now you know okay so when I put out a post I know not to put my sole focus in the United States because about 80 percent of them are in Italy that's the importance of having that business page so you you won't know if you're not paying attention you won't know if you don't see who your audience is if you're paying you like you won't know so the first thing in taking care of your customers is pay attention to what's going on in the world and then create a plan to address it all of y'all have been hearing antonio talk about the recession you've heard him talk about the recession you've heard him say he's been preparing for this recession and since 2009 or it was 2012 is one of those dates grace if you remember which one it was was it 2009 or 2012 he said that he's been preparing for this recession i believe 2012. okay thank you <laughs> he's been preparing for this recession since 2012. he knew it was coming there is a natural order in economics and if you are have you if you've been a part of his mastermind the mastermind that him and, and him and tempest did, you actually he actually showed us a video of how that actually that flow actually works but he pays attention and he created a plan to address it so are you doing the same thing are you paying attention to what's going on? Are you paying attention to the major trends? Are you paying attention and creating a plan to address it? And then the next way you, the next way you take care of your customers is then you pay attention to them because they're going to tell you what's hurting them during this time. The only reason I know that people Families, mothers, fathers are trying not to are trying not to choke their children during this time. And y'all excuse me for phrasing it that way, but this is how it's coming out. Is <laughs> because on my timeline, I don't care what platform it is, you see the memes, you see the videos, you see parents saying, I'm going crazy. These kids are driving me crazy. My mom showed me a video. <laughs> of a man pretending to be a mother talking like and it was to a point where he called the school like he was a mom so uh so when are y'all gonna let them come back to school and i'm sitting here laughing because i'm like people are actually experiencing like they're sitting here waiting for schools to open back up because their kids are driving them crazy but then you also have the videos posting of how parents are finding ways to educate their children I saw a video of a man beatboxing while his, she looked like she was maybe no more than maybe two years old. So he would do a beatboxing, he would point to her, she'd go, A, he'll beatbox, he'll point to her, she'd go, B, he'll beatboxing. You know, and he kept, and they kept going. 
So I know that while all of this is going on, people's major issues are their kids being at home and what to do with them. I also know that people's spouses, partners are driving them crazy because they're all in the house together <laughs> because it's on my timeline. So if you pay attention to the concerns of your audience, they will tell you directly what's driving them crazy, what's bothering them. You have those that are saying, we, the stores are out of everything. We don't have anything. Or I just lost my job. Whatever money I do have, I have to figure out how to spend it properly to make it stretch because I don't know how long this is going to last are there any places that are that are giving out help but that are literally helping because while they're talking about a stimulus package there are families that are in need now that can't wait like all of this is on social media all you have to do is just pay attention so when you're surfing when you're going through your timeline when you're checking out other timelines pay attention pay attention to what the majority is saying because they're telling you what's hurting them so keep your eyes and your ears to the streets slash chat rooms or your your timeline because they if you and that's how you take care of them you take care of them by listening have you ever called a company to let them know what was going on and they did not listen how 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 did you feel after that conversation i actually had a conversation like that with someone and the whole and and at, by the end of the conversation me understanding he's in customer service i told him i said you know what so because i've been where you are i'm going to help you out today I told you five times what my problem was and not once did you address what my problem was. You took me all the way around and never addressed what my problem was and everything you told me to do, I had already done. So if you were actually listening to what I was actually telling you, you this conversation wouldn't have lasted an hour. We could have been in and out of this conversation in 15 minutes. And he actually, he said, ma'am, I'm sorry. Thank you for letting me know. I was like, it's no problem. I wasn't trying to be smart with him. I was just trying to help him out, seriously help him out because I've been on the customer inside on so many occasions. And I'm sitting here telling him, I told you five times what my problem was. I'm not going to say the name of the company, but it's a company that I've, know, I've known of several people having an issue with. So if you are actually listening to your audience and you put and you pay attention and you create a plan, the next thing you do is you address what's hurting them. You let them know, hey, I hear you guys loud and clear. You can put it in the video. Hey, I've been listening to you guys and I just want to let you know this is what we're going to do here at ABC Company to help you during this crisis. If you address what's hurting them, you will always be in their memories. If you address what's hurting them, you'll let, you're telling them, we hear you. We hear you loud and clear. And when you address them, give them comfort in their situation. Because that's the hardest thing to do is let somebody know it's okay. But if you tell them, me too, and it's something Antonio said in, in, in one of his meetings, he either said it in his CEO conference call that he had or in, in, um, today is Thursday, in one, of the, in one of our daily meetings. The strongest thing that you can tell your audience is me too. As far as they're concerned, you're just a business that wants their money. But if you tell them me too, that's the strongest marketing technique that you could use because it's letting them know that you actually care. All your customers want is to know that you care. Because like any other consumer, all they're thinking is businesses just want my money in this time of need because they're suffering. But if you tell them, me too, 
I understand how it feels to not have a job to go to, or I understand how it feels to have to work from home and be with kid with my kid 24 seven, be with my spouse 24 seven. I understand how it feels to not know what, what to teach my child. I understand how it feels to, to sit there at a computer for eight hours straight and forget to eat, <laughs> you know, I understand. And I'm here to help you. Let me help you figure out how to create a family, a family routine while you're at home. Let me help you figure out this. Let me help you figure out that. Be sensitive to their needs, not yours. Yes, we are businesses. Yes, we need capital. Yes, we, we need the, the cash flow because we have bills just like our customers have bills. But if you be sensitive to their needs, they will take care of you. Please excuse this analogy. But if you have a pet dog and you, any, any dog, cat, and you nurture them, you love them, you take care of them, you make sure they're healthy, they will turn around and do the same for you. But if you neglect them, if you leave them outside, no food, no shelter, let them have to weather the weather outside by themselves, don't even take care of them, don't even bathe them, just put them out there, how do you think they're going to treat you? It's the same thing with your audience. Nurture them, care for them, love on them, be sensitive to their needs, and they will do the same in return. Because your brand is so strong because you market it to them that we're about you, not about us. And everything I'm telling you, if, you're, if you are absorbing it, it's all about marketing. Because you're marketing love to your audience. You're marketing sensitivity. You're marketing care to your audience. Not, hey, I know it's a crisis going on, but give me your money. Instead, you're saying, you know what? I know it's a crisis going on. Let me take care of you. Let me show you how. Let me, let me walk you through some things. Let me address you. And I'm, I'm actually going to bring up Ms. Pam Norris and Antonio. Ms. Pam knew in advance. How? I'm going to ask that question. She's tapped into a different type of source over there. <laughs> but she knew in advance. We were going to have some issues with hand sanitizer. Because she pays attention. She keeps her ears and her eyes to the streets and the chat rooms. She's listening, to, she's listening to her audience, and she's like, huh, people are buying hand sanitizer. Let, let me go and teach them how to make their own hand sanitizer. She paid attention to what was going on in the world. She paid attention to her audience. She addressed what was hurting them. Antonio did the same thing. If you have been in any of his calls, he has shifted some things due to what's going on today. He's been sensitive to his audience's needs, taking care of them, you putting out more free, putting out even more free education than he has been than he's done before. The, the whole Conquer the Crisis Summit. They're addressing what's going on because they've been listening to their audience. Because not only during this time is there a financial issue, not only during this time is there a relationship issue, but there's also a mindset issue because nobody was mentally prepared for this. As much as we love our children, my five-year-old is driving me crazy. We were not, we didn't have the mindset ready for this. So when you start addressing what's hurting them, 
you don't have to worry about what's going to happen because they'll take care of you. So before I move forward, does anybody have any questions, comments, concerns, or would like to add value? And the floor is open. There's nothing that you can say that will be wrong. There's no questions that you can ask that will be wrong. Open forum, because this is the time. All right, if not, we are going to go ahead and move forward. So after you address what's hurting your audience, now you move towards a solution. I'm gonna go right back to Ms. Pam. There's a pandemic. It's a virus. People are talking about staying sanitized. Huh. So eventually, people are going to start stocking up on hand sanitizer. And then it's, it's going to move so to the point where it's going to be hard to find. So what am I going to do? I'm going to make a video teaching people how to make their own hand sanitizer. She moved towards a solution. Let your audience know that you have a solution for them. If your audience is complaining about this drive crazy, I don't know what to do, my schedule's off whack, present to them, hey, let me help you create a structured schedule while you're at home. This, 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 and this. And remember, Take lunch breaks. Remember, take time off. Remember, spend time with your children. Use your, even though you're at home, use your day as though you were still going out. Hey, I would like to introduce some amazing online educational services that you can use to help your children. These are educational and fun and it will keep them distracted while they learn. Move towards a solution. And if you don't have one, create one and give it to them. Like I, like I was saying earlier, Grace is listening. I don't know if y'all have been watching, but Grace goes live and teaches a whole lesson on math. Bless her whole heart. I'm not the boy. I'll be sitting. I'm, I'm a student when it comes to that. Because when I tell you, me and Matt, I know how to add my money, I know how to subtract money. I'm adding more than I'm subtracting. You better learn how to multiply. Grace, look, that's going to be my next one. <laughs> yes, ma'am. That's going to be my next one. <laughs> I'm here for you. <laughs> look, you know, and then I'm here to multiply, and then Grace helps me divide it evenly among so we can make sure everything stays straight. <laughs> But she created. She didn't have one in the beginning. Well, she did. I ain't gonna put you out there like that. She did. <laughs> so she went and she created. And she's and now she's giving it to everyone. She's literally giving away free math education. You do the same. If you hear them saying, man, my kid needs to figure out how to do this. My kid plays with a clothes hanger and can play with it for hours. So if somebody can teach, if somebody can teach me or give me a resource on the 50 million different ways to use a clothes hanger, how to make, how to make a clothes hanger tent, how to make a clothes hanger house, how to make clothes hang dominoes, anything, I will be excited because I have a whole box of them. I can give them the whole box and say, hey, let's do this. And, and just simply show him what to do and then let him have at it. You have some kids who love to draw. If you are an arts person, hey, well today, you know what? Today what we're gonna do is, and if you don't know how to do it, reach out. This is when you partner, reach out. Say, hey, you're an art teacher, right? Yeah, you're an art teacher. Okay, look, this one needs you to help me to do. I'm going to expose you and market you and you're going to help my audience and we're going to work together and we're going to help build each other's brand. This is what I want you to do. I'm going to market you as the top art expert in, in my network. 
And you're going to come on here. You're going to teach these kids how to draw puppies, how to draw flowers. You're going to teach them how to draw whatever. Clay, it's a whole backyard full of dirt. So that's what we're going to do. <laughs> and I know that's how you do it, y'all. I know that's how you make clay. But I'm just, just, just flow with me here. Flow with me. It's a whole backyard full of dirt. Let me teach y'all how to make clay pots. This is what you do. This is what you do. And we not and we don't want the we don't want to make the ones that you need to stick in the oven because the kids, you keep them away from heat. You can take some dirt, make some glue, some water, nice little mixture in there, and not, you know, just make sure it's nice, not not the clumpy dirt, but you know the good dirt, and then mold it together and then there you go. Clay though, uh how do you make oh we did it? Recycle paper. Take some old newspaper, and if you have, if you have boomer parents or grandparents, you know they keep newspapers because they like to read them. We do everything on; they still like the physical touch. It's okay because I'm that way with books. You can literally make paper mache. You can teach them how to make paper mache because it's been a. I have not seen anybody do that in years. You can go you can say hey we have someone to teach you how to make recycled paper do you know how proud kids feel after they create something and they can see their creation they will be the most excited and it will keep them occupied for a while unless they get bored easy then you just have to be consistent in what you're doing but if you move towards an action move towards an act give it to them if you don't have one created Antonio does that all the time. When y'all, when y'all say, when you, when you bring up something, and he's like, you know what, we need to do that. How many of y'all have seen? How many of y'all have been on a on a class, or during anything that he's done? Ask a question. Ask, hey, can you teach this? And then either that weekend or in three weeks or so, there's like an eight hour conference on just that. How many of you? Do the same thing. Create it. Create it. If you are a CEO, you're creative. If you're an entrepreneur, you're creative. You already know how to think outside the box. Because being an entrepreneur is not the standard model. You already know how to think outside the box. So get creative with it. Think about the person who made the diaper cake. Don't ask me. It's just that's the first popped in my head. For, for baby showers, these big cakes made of, of all, they're all made of the diapers, the little cloth diapers, or even the, the pamper diapers, and they just roll them and tie them with a little bow and stick them all together. That's creativity out of works. I never would have thought of that. You're just as creative. You just have to think outside of the box. So during during any type of crisis, you have to think outside. Because the crisis situation is not an inbox. It's not in a box situation. A crisis is literally a dam breaking a river flow. That's what a crisis situation is. So you have to. Fall, you have to be able to think just as just as far outside of the box as the crisis situation that's happening. And again, some crises that come up, you will hear about it before it hits. That's why you have to pay attention. So before I move forward, are there any questions, comments, concerns, or does anyone just want to add value? If you have questions, like Miss. Uh, Ms. Charmone asked earlier, if you have questions about how can I apply this, please unlock, uh, unlock, excuse me, unmute your, <laughs> unmute your mic and ask them. This is a mastermind. It's not, please don't think it's just, please don't think it's just, I'm going to sit here and listen and take notes. You can do that too. But if you have questions, ask these questions. If you have questions, ask these questions. Please ask these questions because we're here to help you. Just like Ms. Charmone asked her question and Ms. Pam was like, hey, if you send me, because 
they're going to need it. We can put it here. Instant partnership. So ask your questions. And now I'm going to stop talking and allow you to, to ask your question, give your comment, address your concern, or add your value. So the floor is open. It's all yours. All right, no questions, no comments, no concerns, no adding value, okay. Finally, what you want to do is you want to create community. Antonio told us community is common unity for your customers. Create a place for them to feel like they're still a part of this world. They're at home. They don't have the opportunities that they normally do. They can't go to the movies. Even when they go to the grocery store, they, it's still, even when they go to the grocery store, even when they go to the grocery store, it's still, it's not like a normal going to the grocery store type thing. They have to have their guard up at all times. They can't just roam through the aisles like they normally would. They have to make sure that their hand sanitizer is to be they have to have a face mask they have to make sure that they don't go down a crowded a crowded aisle when before they had the choice of if they wanted to or not now there's no choice so what do you want to do now you want to create a common unity for your customers i have to applaud miss lisa jones and miss and lady maya they created let's talk wednesdays they created a community for people to be able to go to just to talk, just to express, hey, I'm struggling during these times. I'm having a hard time here. They created a safe place, a community for not just the customers, but for each other audience. And then they invite others to come in to be able to do that. Are you do and, and I understand you, there are those of you who still have to work. There are those of you who still have to go home and take care of your household. Incorporate your family. Show that you show that show the me too aspect of what's going on. When you show the me too aspect of what's going on, your audience will appreciate it. Have a have a movie night. There are ways that you're able to do that. You can do a Facebook Live watch. There's so many, Netflix has a way you can do it. There's so many different ways that you can do that and bring in your, and bring in your, and have, and bring in your audience. Share a book. If there's an audio book or if there's a PDF, share that and say, hey, this week we're going to read this and let's all come together on this day and just, you know, just talk about it. I mean, you can even go, go as far as doing a Zoom call, pulling up a movie on your screen and sharing your, sharing your, and sharing your screen and just invite your audience. But create a way for your audience to feel like, regardless of what's going on, I still have this place, this community that I can go and talk and feel safe. And they, under, they understand what I'm going through, so I'm not alone in this, and there's a whole lot of other people that feel the same way. A lot of you are with the ATSJR companies. A lot of you are with the ATSJR companies because of the fact you're around like-minded individuals. Don't you think your audience wants the same? They want that same feeling. They want that same safe place. They want to be able to be around people who think like, who feel like they feel. So does anybody have any additional questions, comments, concerns, or want to add value to anything that was discussed? All right. Well, if there's no questions, comments, concerns, or anyone that just wants to add value, A was a class for... <laughs> Thank you very much, Vastine. I appreciate that. I really do. 
Thank you. Thank you very much, Bastine. Bastine is doing an absolutely amazing job. Be on the lookout. I hope you guys are watching his, his live videos that he's been doing. Go live. Just go live and talk to your audience. That's another way that you can just communicate with them and open up to them. But if there are no more comments, if there are no more questions, any concerns, or if anyone doesn't want to add value, then today we had a short class. I hope this class was extremely valuable to you. I hope I added value to you as well. And if we are, if there are no more questions, comments, concerns, or anyone wanting to add value, in the words of our CEO, you can plant better, you can dominate. Love you more, Phil. Everybody have everybody be safe. Everybody stay sanitized. And keep your mask. Keep your mask on. <laughs> All right, everyone. Have a great one. Bye, everyone.